What's up, family? It's your man, Dear All the Second. Just want to drop this word before I do. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the revelation. I thank you for your word, and I thank you for the opportunities to see when you're speaking to me. I pray you get the glory in this message and that those who hear it will be impacted and empowered. And I thank you for your love, your mercy, your sensitivity, and your Holy Spirit, God. You give a lot of characteristics to your followers, but God, I think the most important thing we have is you. I'm grateful for the characteristics of Jesus, but Lord, I'm thankful that we have Jesus, Lord. The strength, the confidence, the self-esteem, the validation, the security, the feeling good about myself, that comes from you, Jesus. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for giving me an identity. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for when I make mistakes that you love me. Thank you, God, that you're not looking down on me with a critical eye, but you're looking at me with a love. But you chastise me in love, but you care and you value me and that that is still a growth area in my life. But you are loving me. And I thank you and give you praise right now in Jesus name. Let this word do what you want. Amen. What up, family? I just want to say, do not come into a uh, come into agreement with fear. Um, I want to say that because as believers, we have the option to come against something or to receive something. And sometimes without realizing it, we receive things right away and walk in agreement with them. And then we wonder why our life goes in a certain direction. You have to be very careful of what you come into agreement with. Sometimes your emotions might influence you, your environment, people, or even your tongue. As the Bible says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and you will eat the fruit of what you speak. Um, but you have the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit to really speak the power of God in your life. That's why it's important to get in his word so that you know what his word says. Otherwise, you're walking in a lot of unbelief. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, but hearing by the word of God. And you must put God's word in your ears and store it in your heart. The word of God says, I have hidden my word in my heart, so I might not sin against thee. You have a choice. What are you doing with your time? Are you proactive or reactive? I want to give an example. I was just driving home late from the store, minding my business. <clears throat> and I happened to be um, on my way and I stopped at a stop sign and I saw a police car pull, uh, parked. And, you know, of course, if I ain't do nothing, I ain't tripping. But, you know. Sometimes the enemy likes to influence you, like just, you know, you want a sense of fear or worry or anything like that. So I'll say I was more attentive. <laughs> I wasn't speeding or nothing, but you never know. So I started driving. He made a U-turn and pulled out and decided to follow me. And let me tell you what I did. I said, oh, we're going to bring Jesus in this right now. I started praising the Lord. I said, I started praying, focusing on the Lord. I said, thank you, Jesus. I pray I don't speed. I started bringing up. I think I was singing in my mind, great is your mercy towards me. But the example, and so at some point the cop left. Because I've had cops tell me, and sometimes I think they get close, and maybe they do it to see a reaction, to see if you will respond in fear. Whatever the case, I wanted to bring this to your attention, that you have the power and the authority to say, even though I'm in this situation, I can bring Jesus in the situation. I don't have to succumb to worry, fear, anxiety, or a lack of control. What can I control in this? I can control my response, and my response is to submit to the Lord. Now, I was reading in Romans, it talks about obeying and submitting the governing authorities, and I believe that to be true. And it says that they are paid by the king through the taxes to do their job, and they don't bear the sword in vain. And so if you don't want to live in fear, then do what you're supposed to be doing, be obedient. And that's facts. That's facts. Even though there's many instances where there are some in those authority figures, like police officers who abuse their power, I'm not trying to fight this from a flesh and blood standpoint. That's the enemy working through some of those individuals. But the institution of law and order, that is of the Lord. And so what I'm going to do is respect authority, but I am going to bring Jesus, the ultimate authority, into those situations. Because I'm like, hey, Lord, whatever happens, you're going to be a part of this. And we're going to bring your presence into this because I know the Bible is very clear that the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. It says one person can send, I think, a thousand angels to flight, two, ten thousand. So a prayer is going to be important. If I get pulled over and some stuff happening, my first prayer is that I call on Jesus right there in front of him, start speaking in tongues. I was already doing that, start praising him because I'm like, we ain't going to have no back and forth. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to step on no toes. I'm not going to challenge your authority. What I'm going to do is implore the ultimate authority to come into the situation and fight my battle for me. And so my encouragement today, do not come into agreement with your circumstances. Instead of going at flesh and blood with your own combativeness, invite the Holy Spirit in your situation and watch him fight your battles. Great is his mercy towards us. Great is his mercy toward you, his loving kindness toward you, his tender mercy you see day after day. That's a Donnie McClurkin song. 
forever faithful towards you, always providing for you. His tender mercies you see, great is his grace. Anyway, I just wanted to put that song in your heart and say when you find yourself in a situation where emotions want to rise and escalate, don't come into agreement with the circumstance. Come into agreement with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Ghost. Come into agreement with Jesus, the one that walked on water, that came back from the dead, the one who had the Holy Spirit, who rose him up, the same Spirit of God that is in you if you are in fellowship with Jesus, the same Spirit that seals you for the day of redemption. Before I go, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. Listen, you can't save yourself. When you die, you're going to heaven, you're going to hell. And it's not by your own strength that you can get in either. The Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. If you want to get into heaven, you must have his spirit. How do you have his spirit? You must know his son. How do you know his son? You have a relationship with Jesus, who is the son. Jesus said, no one can get to the father, but by me. So if you want to have a relationship with the son, you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died and that God the father raised him back from the dead. If you want to do that, repeat after me. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and that God the Father raised you back from the dead. Come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. Now, if you did that and you believe that, guess what? You are a Christian. You are born again. The Spirit of God is now in your heart, but you must get baptized in water and get in a Bible-based church because the Word of God is true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a lie. So focus on the Lord and let his word minister to you. And um, there's, just know there's a celebration in heaven because angels are jumping for joy because you have crossed over from death unto life because you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You see, when he died, he came back from the grave and he provided eternal life by placing your faith in him. His righteousness becomes your own because the Bible says our righteousness is like filthy rags. And so we can never save ourselves. So Jesus said, let me send them a scapegoat. Let me send them my begotten son, my son that came from me. And his son never sinned. He lived a perfect life. So when he died, he was the righteous requirement to pay for our sins. And when we accepted the deal, you can say the plea bargain. We accepted the deal. We accept him as our substitution, our sacrifice for us. We become brand new creations and our our our, our life, we are bought with that price, which is his blood, the righteous blood. And so he became a curse for us. He died so that we could live. He was beaten so that we could be set free. And so you're going to be mistreated because you're a Christian. You're going to be disliked. But the Bible says, blessed are ye when men revile you, speak all manner of evil against you falsely for his name's sake, for great is your reward in heaven. For as they do to us, they did to him. The student is not greater than the teacher. So just rejoice. That means his spirit is upon you. But get in your word and watch God transform your life because great is his mercy towards you. My name is Daryl Order the Second. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Holla at your boy. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Peace. Oh Lord, bless them to hear this word. Bless all those who hear it in Jesus' name. Amen. There you go. Peace.